If you are shooting on mobile and you wanna create content, you might have mixed opinions on how realistic it is to achieve professional looking content on one of these. Let's go through three scenarios or styles of content that you might face when it comes to being a creator and shooting stuff. I'm not gonna be biased in any way. I'm gonna show you guys either how amazing or terrible shooting on mobile can be. And I'll show you the results so you can have an idea of what you think is a realistic expectation of professional looking content on mobile. We're gonna optimize the phones to give them a good chance of looking as best as they can. The same as you would do with a normal camera by using nice lenses, microphones, whatever accessories, and also just things in your environment to make sure that you can capture the nicest footage possible. Our three scenarios that we are going to cover. First, a studio setup, kind of like this one. Any creator needs to know how to film something like this. Our second, a vlogging situation or being out in the real world making most of the scenario and scene at hand. The third is gonna be some tasty cinematic B-roll to top it off. If you guys want an in-depth video into this, I have an entire mobile filmmaking course, and it's gonna be linked in the top of the description. Let's start with our studio setup. Now, this is actually gonna be the easiest of the three because all of our variables are, for the most part, controllable. Before we get to those variables, let's look at our phone settings. I'm gonna put it over into 24 frames per second because I'm not gonna be filming any slow motion for my talking head studio scenario. I'm gonna shoot in either wide or medium lens, depending on your space, and I'm just gonna be using the native app. Let's keep it simple. It does everything that you need it to. I'm gonna assume you guys have some sort of tripod or at least a chair or something that you can balance your phone on. So let's move on to lighting. Our main focus with lighting is just giving the tiny little sensor on our phone the best chance at creating a nice quality image, as well as some soft light onto our face so that it's pleasing and that we look our best. Now, if you're shooting on a phone, chances are you don't wanna spend a whole bunch of money on lights, so don't stress. Ideally, get yourself a dedicated video light, a cheap one, because it's gonna be the easiest and heal the best results, but I totally get it if you don't wanna spend that money on that either. So the next in line best option is to use some form of bedside light or normal light that you can move around and control and shine it into some form of reflective surface. If it's a bed sheet you've hung up, even just a white wall, that's gonna bounce that light, reflect it onto yourself and light you up nicely in a nice soft way. Get it as close as you can to yourself and about 45 degrees off to the side as well as 45 degrees up. My light is just about right here off of frame and I'm shining it onto the side of my face as well as down. That creates a nice kind of cinematic look where the light isn't just straight on and it gives a little bit of shadow on the side but it's still nice and filled in. So here's a shot of me with the bedside light bouncing off of a reflective surface and here's one with the cheap but still pro light. Pro light is a little bit better, but both definitely usable. If you're still struggling or you just don't have any form of light, get yourself in front of a window when it's not direct sun coming through that window. Something where there might be a bit of shade, but the whole window is still gonna act as a nice soft box filling you in, kind of like this one right here. Now that our image is sorted, we need to address the audio because it's equally as important and well, on these, it sucks. <laughs> so we're gonna be using a nice little pro mic for mobile and the one we're gonna be going with is this Hohem mic. They were also awesome enough to sponsor this video and this is an amazing little solution if you guys wanna capture pro audio on your mobile device. I can simply just take this little bit, plug it into my phone right here, and the most important thing when it comes to audio is getting your microphone as close to the source as possible. So using the little wireless mics that this comes with, I can just clip this right here, right next to my mouth, and be sure that this is gonna be capturing clear and crispy audio. The Hohem mic actually comes with two of these, so if you're doing any form of like interview style, you can clip this one on the other person, they're gonna record to the left and right channel and you guys are gonna have amazing audio from both of your subjects. Let's take a look at how our mobile setup looks and sounds when we've applied all of these techniques. Here's the stock standard iPhone sound in the studio. And here's the Hoha mic sound in the studio. I think it sounds a lot better. Next is gonna be our vlog setup. 
Again, we're gonna need some tools and having some form of like little tripod is gonna be essential. At bare minimum, get some phone holder that you can just clip your phone in so you're not just holding the phone like this, trying to film around and film yourself, touching the screen and all the buttons. So anything, whether it's something like this or just one of those little cheapo selfie sticks that you can get for a couple bucks on Amazon just to get that phone out of your hand. So let's get a Casey Neistat style shot of filming ourselves like this. We're gonna stay in 24 frames per second because no slow-mo. And I'm also gonna flip it over into ultra wide or the widest lens that you guys have available to you. Get your phone around, use the back camera. I know that you can't see yourself and it's nice to see that pretty face staring back at you, but you're gonna get significantly better quality with the camera on the back. Once you're in the super wide lens, you're gonna get quite used to framing yourself up anyway, and because of how wide it is, it's quite easy to get a nice pleasing shot with you in the frame. You can always double check your work, make sure that you got everything nice and in there, and that your composition behind you or nothing weird was going on. Being outside, one of our biggest problems is gonna be the wind noise, because we still want our voices to be nice and clear. We are, of course, gonna be using the Hohem mic, and by pairing it with the phone, along with the included little wind muffs that it comes with, we can capture really, really crispy audio. Here's the audio from the Hohem mic. It's got the wind muff on. There'll be no wind noise. And one of the best parts about it is I can get really far away from you and you're still gonna hear me completely perfectly because it's a wireless mic. And no matter where I'm going, the sound is still gonna be perfect because the audio source is only centimeters from my mouth. I really like the fact that I can just pop these back into the case and they automatically charge so that I can ensure that they are always gonna be fully charged when I'm out on my vlogging and sweet travel adventures. Try and take note of the light around you. The HDR mode is kind of good for dynamic range, but finding a nice even exposure is always gonna be much better looking and help the phone to look a little more cinematic and less phony, kind of. Find some shade, shoot at the best times of day when the sun is low, and give your phone the nicest chance of getting that beautiful light. The phone stabilization is pretty good, and I find I can walk around while filming myself like this and still get a good result. Another way I like to do this is having a lock off, which is why having the tripod is so essential. I can just kind of put you guys there, it stays nice and stable, and it gives kind of like a little professional touch to your videos. Something else I like to do is kind of use a mix of both to make your final video feel a little bit more dynamic and like there's different things going on. Sometimes you're walking and talking, sometimes it's locked off just talking to that stable camera. The third scenario is going to be cinematic B-roll. Cinematic B-roll. Let's get our phone over into a higher frame rate for some beautiful buttery smooth slow motion. Either hitting it over into 60 or if you really want to emphasize something, go over into the slow-mo and you can shoot at 120 or 240. The quality is going to deteriorate the higher the frame rates go, especially in the slow-mo part of the app. I'm going to make use of all three lenses just to add variety and diversity to the shots and I'm going to try and add some really nice smooth cinematic movements when I'm filming in the two wider lenses. Push forwards, pullbacks, slides and tilts, but kind of avoiding pans like this one. They just don't look that great to me. Try shoot at golden hour, sunrise, sunset, but try and avoid shooting directly into the sun so you don't get this weird like highlight ball in frame. Just move your frame slightly off, having the sun just out of frame and it ends up looking a lot better. I'm still gonna be using the Hohem mic to capture the natural sounds around me for a more immersive experience when the viewer watches it. I kind of like to underexpose just a little bit by tapping and pulling this little sun guide down. It gives me more room to color grade and edit later on without blowing out those highlights and I think it just generally looks a little bit better on the phone. I also like to get a little creative with locking my autofocus and exposure by just holding on the subject until you see this little AE slash AF lock and that's gonna keep your focus and exposure to that point. The phone doesn't have like crazy depth of field being such a small sensor, but you can still get some nice bokeh kind of shots if you get your foreground really close and your background really far away with enough separation. Those are our three scenarios. I think the phone holds pretty well on its own what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments, honestly. I know there's such a popular thing of creating pro content on phones these days, and although 
I don't think a phone is gonna hold up to a pro camera, it's just not. I do think you can still capture amazing footage on these. And I definitely think that there should never be a reason not to go and film something or to start making those videos that you've been thinking about making. Check out the Hohem mic in the top of the description below as well as my entire mobile filmmaking course to make sure that you are getting the most out of your mobile device. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one. Have fun.